Hello and welcome to this news update. I'm Ankita Mukherjee and the big story breaking right now. Night curfew will be imposed in Delhi from uh, 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. starting tomorrow. That's what uh, the Delhi government has said as the national capital reported 290 fresh COVID cases. That's a 16% jump from yesterday. There's been one related death in uh, 24 hours as well. Sonakshi joining us with the latest on that. Sonakshi, as we've been seeing some worrying visuals also of crowds at Delhi's markets or people out celebrating this uh, festival week, as it were, uh, between Christmas and New Year. Um, that rather worrying spike in cases and now this crackdown. Well, absolutely. Like you rightly pointed out, the Delhi government first banned public gatherings ahead of Christmas and New Year's in the wake and in the light of the rising Omicron cases and COVID cases in the national capital. Uh, earlier today, NDTV visited uh, several spots across the national capital, including a Delhi zoo, a popular spot for tourists to come. Uh, the markets like Sarojini Nagar Market, Lajpat Nagar Market. All these, all these visuals on your screen right now will tell you that uh, there is absolutely no following of protocols, basic COVID protocols, uh, violations of all these COVID protocols are taking place and people are flouting the most basic rules when it comes to COVID. And now the Delhi government, in addition to the other decisions they have made in the wake of rising cases in the national capital, they have imposed a night curfew. Remember, curfews is something that state governments go in for first. So the Delhi government has now started to imply, will start to imply night curfews starting at 11 p.m. to end at 5 a.m. starting from tomorrow, which is Monday. And this night curfew, according to the Delhi government, will uh, help in terms of cr uh, crowd management and, 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 and sort of controlling the crowds that sort of uh, move around the city, especially given that there's festivities and there's a festival week ahead of us with, with the New Year's coming uh, ahead of us. So yes, a night curfew being imposed by the Delhi government at a time when the Delhi when Delhi is also reporting a very high number of COVID cases. Remember, 290 COVID cases have been reported today. Uh, it's also seeing a high positivity rate. It is increasing. And in addition to that, the number of Omicron cases are also rising in the national capital. There are 79 Omicron cases currently in Delhi. So yes, Delhi is now the state that is heading in for a night curfew in the wake of, once again, a rise in COVID cases and Omicron cases. Shunakshi, thanks very much for joining us uh, with those latest details. Mumbai today also reporting 922 new cases of coronavirus in 24 hours. And that's a significant 21% jump from yesterday when uh, Mumbai logged 757 cases. Now, this is the city's highest single day spike in nearly seven months. On the 4th of June, Mumbai had reported 973 cases in a day. The jump in cases, of course, coming amid renewed global fears over the new variant of the coronavirus, which is being called Omicron. Two related deaths were also reported today. Then the city's active caseload now stands at 4,295 uh, cases. Sohit joining us with the latest on that. Sohit, you know, we've seen similar visuals from Mumbai as well of crowds gathering at the beach, at uh, uh, markets as well. And, uh, you know, this is a big festival season. People are out on the roads and concomitantly we're also seeing cases rising. So, uh, you know, w what next really are COVID precautions not being followed at all? Uh, well, uh, that's true, Ankita, if we talk about that, the COVID precautions that have been uh, issued by the government is actually not being followed. We saw the visuals from the Juhu Chopati where we saw that people in huge numbers were present. Right now, I am at uh, the Dada beach. But uh, as of now, what I can tell you that uh, the number of people over here is less. However, uh, right opposite what you see uh, in Bandra, uh, where, the, uh, where there is a fair that is going on, over there, uh, there are people in large numbers that are present as well. Uh, uh, yes, uh, 922 cases have been reported in the last 24 hours. It is the highest since 4th of June. Uh, now, remember that Section 144 has been imposed in Mumbai till 31st of December and apart from that even across Maharashtra strict guidelines were issued on Friday night but even after that what we are seeing that there has been a constant rise in the uh, COVID cases across uh, uh, not only in Mumbai but across the state in fact today we saw how 
the total number of students who have come positive in Ahmednagar have risen to 52. So yes, the number of cases have been increasing and it would be important to see that what happens next. One also needs to remember that the winter session is still uh, going on. It is happening in Mumbai and uh, we all are waiting uh, for uh, the chief minister or uh, uh, the mayor of Mumbai to speak and uh, will there be new restrictions for the uh, New Year Eve? That is one question because the BMC has already issued a notification saying that they won't be allowing any uh, uh, celebration that uh, to happen on 31st of December in Mumbai. So that steps have been already taken but despite that there have been a constant rise in the number of COVID cases, 922 in a day. Uh, uh, the highest like this was in 4th of, of June. Uh, that was during the peak of uh, the second wave. And uh, since uh, once again the number of cases are rising, it would be important to see that what are the steps that the government would be taking. While at the, uh, the other beach, the number of people are less. We can't say the same about other beaches as well as be it Marine Drive, Gateway of India or other places. Uh, and despite section 144, there are uh, people who are present on these public places. Right. So thanks for that uh, update. So party is still on in full swing, even though that beach is relatively clear at this point. But as India gears up for a potential Omicron surge, people do seem to be flouting COVID precautions as festivities rev up. Rev up. Look at these visuals uh, from Kolkata on Christmas. This was Kolkata's Park Street, cause for concern indeed. Thousands of people walking the streets uh, without worrying about COVID-19 protocols, not even masked in some cases. In fact, extra police personnel were deployed to manage uh, the crowds and even uh, vehicular movement had to be suspended for some hours on Saturday evening because of the overcrowding. In Chandigarh, two more Omicron cases were detected. Samples of five family contacts of a previous Omicron positive patient were sent for genome sequencing. Two of these were found to be positive for the Omicron variant. One of them is an 80-year-old male who is uh, hypertensive but he's asymptomatic currently. The second is a 45-year-old male who was reported as RT-PCR negative on the 24th of December and was discharged. Genome sequencing reports of the remaining are still pending. Ghazali joining us with that. Uh, Ghazali, what else are we hearing? Uh, the government, uh, the Chandigarh administration has also put out a notification of uh, that only those who have got double vaccination will be allowed in public spaces. So this is one such measure which has been adopted not only by Haryana, but even Chandigarh is approaching and adopting the same method that only double uh, those who have got fully vaccinated will be allowed to get into the public space. And uh, these are the total three cases of Omicron has been detected as of now. The first person was a foreign traveler. He was detected first, but he was he has recovered and returned to his home. But two of his contacts who, whose samples were sent for the genome sequencing, now they have turned positive. Now, this is another one big issue that the genome sequencing reports takes around weeks to come. By the time many of these patients you have seen on not only in Chandigarh, but even in Haryana, that by the time these genome sequencing reports arrive, the person recovers and, is, and has returned to home. So uh, this is also one thing which the health department of this region, be it Punjab, Haryana or Chandigarh, are also looking into. Ghazali, thanks very much for that update. Let's take a look at the overall numbers then. As we said, 435 reported Omicron cases now. Maharashtra leading the list with 110 such cases. Delhi had 79 currently. Telangana has 38 cases. Karnataka, 38 reported cases. Tamil Nadu, 34. Gujarat, 43. Kerala, 37. Rajasthan, 22. Haryana and Odisha, 4 each. Jammu and Kashmir, 3. West Bengal, 3. Andhra Pradesh, 4. UP2, Chandigarh 3, Ladakh, Uttarakhand have one case each. Madhya Pradesh now has eight cases and Himachal Pradesh has reported its first case. So Madhya Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh reporting their first cases on Sunday. In Madhya Pradesh, eight people who returned from abroad tested positive. In Himachal Pradesh, one case was confirmed from nine samples that had been sent for genome sequencing. Of the eight cases in MP, three had returned from the US, two each from the United Kingdom and Tanzania, and one from Ghana, six tested negative and have now been discharged. In a late night address on Saturday, Prime Minister Modi made some big announcements about India's vaccination drive, a third dose described as a precaution dose for those above the age of 60 who also have comorbidities. 
Precaution doses will also be given to healthcare and frontline workers. The Prime Minister also announced vaccinations for children between 15 and 18, and these will roll out from the 3rd of January. पंद्रह साल से अठारह साल की आयु के बीच के जो बच्चे हैं अब उनके लिए देश में वैक्सीनेशन प्रारंभ होगा 2022 में तीन जनवरी को सोमवार के दिन से इसकी शुरुआत की जाएगी ये फैसला कोरोना के खिलाफ देश की लड़ाई को तो मजबूत करेगा ही स्कूल कॉलेजों में जा रहे हैं हमारे बच्चों की और उनके माता पिता की चिंता भी कम करेगा टाइम फॉर अ वेरी क्विक ब्रेक अप नेक्स्ट सेवरल रिपोर्ट्स ऑफ क्रिसमस सेलिब्रेशन बींग डिस्ट्रप्टेड एंड स्टैच्यू ऑफ जीसस डेसिक्रेटेड एज गोन्स ट्राई एंड स्टॉप क्रिसमस सेलिब्रेशन मॉरन मॉर्न A committee will be formed to look into the withdrawal of the controversial Armed Forces Special Powers Act in Nagaland. Chief Minister Nephew Rio tweeted after a meeting with Home Minister Amit Shah this afternoon. Now he held a meeting to discuss the present scenario in Nagaland on the 23rd of December. That meeting had been attended by the Nagaland Chief Minister, the Assam Chief Minister and others. In that meeting, it was decided that a panel would be instituted to look into the withdrawal of AFSPA in Nagaland. The demand for the withdrawal of the law, which gives a wide range of powers to the army, has surged in a state in that state after 14 civilians died earlier this month in a botched operation by the army in Nagaland's Mon district and the retaliatory violence that followed. Well, the army has uh, once again expressed regret over the Nagaland killing, saying the loss of lives was sad and unfortunate. This after the center decided to set up the panel on AFSPA, the army issuing that statement and apologizing for the 14 lives lost. The army said we encourage people to share material and assist in our inquiry. We are yet to hear from uh, the organizations which have spearheaded the movement this time. Remember, this time the movement started from the Oting village, uh, which uh, actually lost. Uh, 12 uh, uh, young men uh, in that uh, firing, remember 12 out of those 14 men who died uh, in the uh, armed forces firing on uh, 4th and 5th December are from Moting Village and then uh, the Konyak Union, the apex body of the uh, you know Konyak tribe who dominate that area, the ENPO, the larger body of the eastern Nagaland districts uh, where we saw maximum uh, protests. So uh, these groups were the groups who you know spearheaded the uh, protests this time. Uh, we are yet to hear hear from them. Uh, we are also hear, yet to hear from the larger, uh, larger Naga Society, NSF, and also the Northeast Students uh, Association, which led uh, the protest across Northeast. But what is important here, if you look at what this committee is going to do, is, is going to study uh, uh, and submit a report within 45 days. But es essentially, if you look at the de decisions taken, then the government of India is meeting some of the demands of that were put forward, particularly by the people of Eastern Nagaland, but not all the demands. Now, essentially, uh, you know, the demand has been repeal of Armed Forces Special Power Act from Nagaland and across Northeast. That is the larger demand. But even uh, even bigger is the demand of justice for the uh, 14 youths. And all this while, in this fortnight uh, that uh, this incident has taken place, we have run several reports. And every time we spoke to the protesting groups, they have. Uh, you know, they have been very straightforward in uh, saying that, you know, until unless the, uh, the armed forces Jawans who are involved in the operation are uh, tried through uh, normal, uh, you know, uh, uh, court, uh, they don't feel that justice will happen. At this stage, it seems that center is okay with the court of inquiry which army has already instituted. Ratnadeep reporting on that story. Moving on, India has seen a rise in cases of violence against religious minorities recently. Churches have been attacked, Christmas celebrations disrupted in many places. In the latest such instances, in Assam Silchar last night, there was a major commotion on Church Road where right-wing group members disrupted Christmas celebrations at night, forcing hundreds of people from other religions to leave the church premises. Members who claim to be from the Bajrang Dal stopping those celebrations, saying that they were objecting to 
those of other faiths participating in these celebrations. उद्यापन करोमबत्ती जलार फोटो उठे जुक्तिसंगत मत है Meanwhile, a statue of Jesus Christ was vandalized at a church in Haryana Zambala this afternoon. The police are analyzing CCTV footage, but haven't as yet been able to identify the criminals. A Christmas carnival was also disrupted at a private school by a right-wing mob in Haryana on Thursday. उन लोगों को पकड़ने के लिए हमने प्रयास शुरू किए तीन टीमें एक सी आई यू वन के नेतृत्व में एक सी आई यू टू के नेतृत्व में और एक एस एच ओ अम्बाला कैंट के नेतृत्व में हमने गठित की सी सी टी वी फुटेज हमने हासिल कर ली है उसमें दो लड़के इस वारदात को अंजाम देते हुए नजर आ रहे हैं हम उस सी सी टी वी की जो फुटेज है उसके आधार पर हमें उम्मीद है कि जल्दी ही हम ऐसे तत्वों को गिरफ्तार कर लेंगे मीन वाइल सेवेंटी सिक्स सुप्रीम कोर्ट लॉयर्स हैव नाउ रिटर्न टू द चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया टू टेक अप टू टेक कॉग्नाइजेंस ऑफ टू हेट स्पीचेस द लेटर हाईलाइट्स टू इवेंट्स ऑर्गेनाइज इन डेली बाय द हिंदू युवा वाहिनी एंड इन हरिद्वार बाय द यति नरसिंग आनंद ऑन सेवनटीन एंड नाइनटीन दिसंबर The hate speeches consisted of open calls for genocide of a particular community. The letter says speeches delivered were not mere hate speeches, but amounted to an open call for murder of an entire community. The speeches thus pose a great threat not just to the unity and integrity of our country, but also endanger the lives of millions of citizens. In a view of the seriousness and gravity of the aforementioned events, it is most humbly prayed that your lordship may take so much cognizance of the same and direct that action be taken against guilty persons. Says that letter. 